Good RAM has always been an integral part of a good setup, but it's never quite created the impact it does now. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese, four piece of the KFC variety Milwaukee Triple XL. And in this review, I'm going to be looking at RAM and Ryzen. Well, it's not really a review. It's a part three of our AMD CPU month piece. And I've done generational look at, well, generational improvements from 2700X and the to the 5600X, where six cores now equals eight cores, except the six cores are even faster than the eight cores used to be insane and then i've looked at the 3950x to the 5950x and the single core improvements that amd reset up their caching systems for and how that impacted performance but now we come to perhaps the cheapest and most important upgrade you can do especially if you have a ryzen system amd loves fast ram it loves dual channel ram to the point of somewhat ridiculousness and funnily enough actually speed trumps the dual channel setup, which is was interesting to figure out and find out along the way. So to do that, I needed obviously quite a lot of RAM. So my normal baseline is the Clev Crafts X RGB. It's a 3200 CL16 set. But for this, I went to the top of the top, really, of where you want to go with Ryzen, where you actually do get some performance improvements. And that's the 3600 megahertz with the CL18 CAS latency. My previous set of RAM was the Corsair 3466 kit, the original Vengeance RGB Pro, one of the only kits that was certified back then for 3200 ZL16 on Ryzen, and I've been using it on every platform since. The compatibility has been absolutely fantastic. And funnily enough, this Clev Crash X RGB, I think uses an identical controller because I literally put those two different kits in together, which is usually not a good idea, but it ran absolutely flawlessly. And we did it more than once. We did it even with newer kits of the Vengeance, the, the original, the, well, the normal 3200 CL16s. With these at rates of the 3200 CL16, they were identical uh, as far as the motherboard was concerned, at least. So to test this, we are going to be using my main rig, which I've shown in the 3950 and the 5950X video. Uh, I'll flash that across the screen for you, but I'll flash the full spec on the side. Now, the only thing that's changed from system to system is the RAM setup. So I had a single 16 gig DIMM of 3600 CL18. I had two 16 gig DIMMs to make 32 gigs worth of that in dual channel. And then I had four by eight gigs because there was a piece done a little while ago, actually, by Steve from the guys at... Uh, 12 seconds later. By the guys at Gamers Nexus. I completely forgot what their channel was called there for a moment. But he was basically showing and hypothesizing that four DIMMs beat two and by a significant margin. Now, I wanted to see if that continued with the RAM speeds gain. Because I noticed, even just going to 3600 from 3200, I had some pretty significant performance increases, about five to 10% across the board. And so that's what I set out to test, is if that would still be consistent with one versus dual channel versus quad or full set in dual channel setup. By going to four RAM DIMMs, it does not enable quad channel memory support. That has to be available on the processor just to be clear. But for this, I went into some not so insignificant detail and ran like 36 benchmarks. So what I'm gonna do now is jump over to the PC setup so that I can do a bit of a talking headpiece with all of the benchmark data so that I don't miss anything. Alrighty then, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the argument. So we're going to start off with Cinebench R15, which is now becoming a little bit antiquated. And rather embarrassingly, the single 16 gig was almost the fastest. The 4 by 8 gig beat it up by 3 points on a 4,000 scale. It's a percent of a percent, so it's not really much to talk about there. And it's actually quite similar as we go forward into Cinebench R20, with that being more of the case, except this time some normality was resuscitated or resumed here with the single 16 gig losing out to the 2x16 and the 4x8 but if you notice the 2x16 actually beat the 4x8 as well which it shouldn't theoretically do but uh, that's why we have R23 nowadays and 
on in R23, finally we had a normal procession of events where the 4x8 gig beat out the 2x16 and the 1x16. Now this is uh, rather underwhelming with there being almost no difference between the two, right? And uh, that's where things get just a little bit interesting. You're going to say to me, oh, but Reese, there's almost no difference between these two until we move on to CPU mark. And now this is where the gaps start widening and things start to become a little bit clearer. If you notice the overall score, how much that was impacted by the situation, 10% difference overall. And it's because of things like single threaded, well, not so much the single threaded performance, although it, 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 this is kind of interesting because you'll see as we go through some of the other benchmarks, it is the case. But look at that physics score, just as an example, it's half of what it normally would be. It's half the processing performance. SSE did go down about a percent as well, but and those are the, normally the instruction sets and the AVX instruction sets work in kind of the same ways, which is why the Cinebench looked like that. But now as we go forward into gaming tests and physics tests, starting off with good old year old Firestrike Ultra with a 4K test, now we start to see the progression and why memory needs to be set up correctly. You'll notice overall and physics scores were impacted. Everything is slightly worse without the dual channel. And now moving on to normal fire strike, you'll see how much worse that gets when you do a 1080p test. Look at the combined scores, 6% knocked off of the top. Look at the, the physics test as well. The combined tests, I mean, on frame rate, we're down 7%. With exactly the same motherboard processor, everything else, only the RAM being changed. And that's not something to sniff at, 6%. Overall performance, if you consider the overall cost of the machine versus what that 6% costs you overall to get that upgrade, that's one of the cheapest upgrades you can make. And it's just exasperated as we go on into Time Spy Extreme. Now, the CPU test is 12% worse, 12% performance loss. Okay, and this and Time Spy has a newer way of testing CPUs in a simulation type environment. Eleven to twelve percent performance knock. Now, interestingly, in these tests, there wasn't actually that much graphical knock, which is why you also need to do some single performance graphical testing, which is what we're going to move on to next. Just uh, having a look at normal Time Spy, it's even worse. <laughs> the CPU score dropped twenty three percent, twenty two percent. Graphics tests also dropped. And this is what a, more of what I was expecting from it and more what you'll see in the gaming benchmarks as we move forward now into, I believe, CSGO Ultra. So this didn't have as much impact as I was assuming it would have, especially with the 1x16 compared to the 2x16. It actually lost by 5 frames, which is weird, but the 4x8 gig now takes a top spot at 506. Moving on to Dota 2, though, at 1080p Ultra, we have a much more complete benchmark picture. And here's where those gaps become just that much more obvious. The 1% lows decreased by 25%. The average decreased there by 15%. And this is where the quad channel actually starts to make a little bit of sense when you look at the average and the lower frame rate. You see that it now beats out the dual channel or the quad setup. It's not quad channel. I'm just using that as a, a, a quick jargon for my brain. Apologize. But you can see across the board, it thumped both of the other setups. Moving forward onto Metro, it's more of the same. The dual channel to the to the four setup wasn't that much of a difference, but single compared to dual, it's day and night. And stability as well. Your your potential highs, your averages all improve by just going from a single to a dual channel setup. Similarly, with a more CPU intensive game like Vermintide 2 Extreme, look at these performance results. This should tell you exactly what you need to know here. Minimum frame rate increased by nearly 30% between the different layers. I definitely think the quad channel or the full base setup does give the best overall performance based on these performance stats. I think that's quite obvious, but it's not so much better than the dual channel that I would push you in that direction. Normally I would have said four by eight gig would be the way to go. Now I think honestly two by 16 gig and then upgrading to 64 if you need that in the future is definitely going to be the best baseline for that. So I think with these, I made my point perfectly clear with the Ryzen and RAM. Back to the studio. I think with what I've now shown you, 
it should be unequivocal that you really need dual channel memory setup. The quad channel, the full four bay worth of memory doesn't actually create that much impact, especially when you're on a 3600 megahertz platform. Even the single 16 gig DIMM at 3600 CL18 was better than what I was getting of 3200 CL16, Ooh, very comparable to that. And when I went dual channel, then obviously I got that a performance increase. But here's the thing, right? With Ryzen, we're always, well, with PCs, a lot of us are chasing that pinnacle of performance. And the RAM setup, comparatively to an entire build, is one of the cheapest ways to get performance. A good RAM kit at 3600 CL18 won't cost you north of two and a half grand for even a two by eight gig. You have to have that dual channel though. You can, I think that's a moot point, right? I think the quad channel is maybe, or the quad setup is something nice to have. But the point of this presentation is, a single DIMM is a bad idea. Higher speed is going to result in better performance to the point that the 3600 almost beats the 3200 even with that dual channel setup unlocked. But once you go to dual channel, that's where the magic really starts happening with Ryzen. It's something that you need to pay a lot of attention to. And there's a lot of 3600 CL18 in the market now. Compatibility from brands like Clever and Corsair, absolutely perfect. I've never had any issues with them. They literally plug and play on every single platform. So those come highly suggested for Ryzen, which can be sometimes just that little bit finicky. Considering my own setup with the four eight gigs, I think 32 is fine for the time being. Games don't really use more than eight gig. The one caveat to that being Tarkov, which I have played previously, which I have seen use up to about 11 gigs worth of VRAM, of RAM um, and, and VRAM, I think just Charles resources. It's optimized the same way the NC budget is optimized, not at all. So yeah, it does uh, tend to take out resources like a rampant California fire. But the bullet point of the presentation is, if you want the best performance, start at 3200 CL16, that would, I would say would be your kind of stock minimum now going forward for AMD on all platforms. I mean like from your quad core 3100 all the way to your 5950X, that would be the baseline you would want to. But if you're getting a more premium system and you're spending like 15,000 Rand just on a processor, two and a half grand to get 10% performance nearly extra out of the system should be a moot point. The overall cost of that comparative to the rest of it for your performance increases for GPU, motherboard, etc. This is one of the best and cheapest ways to get extra performance out of your platform. And that is the end of part three of three parts of the AMD CPU month. A huge, huge thank you to AMD for approaching us and, and Rectron for giving us the opportunity to be able to do this content with you guys. I absolutely love AMD. I'm very, very pleased that they've made a competitive product for the market and come back swinging. Auntie Lisa, you are an absolute gem of technology and I wish you guys nothing but the best. So for more, please do check out amd.com. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the flip side. Uh, do you want to go past? I'm presenting. Thanks for the distraction. Appreciate you.